have to move. You didn't have to move. Ready? Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Montgomery Baptist Church. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. It is good to be back in the house of the Lord. Thank you to those of you who have been able to join us here in the flesh at Montgomery Baptist Church. Thank you for those of you who are with us online on Facebook or on Instagram. It is a blessing to be here in the middle of October in 2020. Even now, the Lord continues to bless us. He is keeping us. He is guiding us. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let us look to our opening scripture this morning. I'll read Psalms number 13, Psalm number 13, verses uh, 3 through 6, where the word of the Lord reads, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Let those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Let us pray. This is the day that you have made, Lord. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us here on this day at this appointed time that we praise and worship to you, that we might magnify and glorify your name, that we might hear a word from you through our pastor this morning that would uplift, that would convict, that would do all things to draw us closer unto you. We ask, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would move in this place, Father God, and go out among the airwaves so that those who are visiting with us online may be blessed, that you might encourage each one of us, Father God, and that even in this sometimes dark time, Father God, you would continue to show us that you are the light of the world. Keep us and guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, amen. Amen. You made it through another week. Amen. You made it through another week. It, they, they sometimes seem like they're longer than seven days, and sometimes it's a struggle but you made it through another week. God is blessing you even right now. Open your eyes and look around and ask for discernment and see that the Lord truly is good. Amen? Amen. As I have said before to those of you who are visiting with us online, we are open uh, and we are able to accommodate those of you who would like to be here in person. We are socially or physically distancing even though we are spiritually and socially connected we're wearing masks and so as the lord leads please do feel free to come join us but when you're not here you can always join us here on facebook live and i think you can also watch on youtube later on if you don't get to us at a live time know that the lord is doing a great thing here at montgomery baptist church even now and we're excited to have you here with us we're excited and encouraged this Pastor Appreciation Month and are looking forward to some of the events that we have planned. Let me just take a moment and give everyone an update of, and a reminder of where we are. This is our, our custom. We will be having the Fall Festival again uh, this year, but doing it slightly differently, as you uh, can imagine. Uh, this year it's going to be on October the 24th at 3.30 here at the church, October the 24th, that's a Saturday, I believe, um, here at the church, uh, followed by a drive-in concert at 4 p.m. Uh, we are asking for the church's planning purposes uh, for all of you to come, but if you're going to come, please RSVP to Sister Linda so we can plan accordingly. Uh, if you're planning to be there for the chili, for the, for the grilled cheese meal, for the music, uh, please let her know by October the 18th, October the 18th, that's coming up in about a week, uh, you can reach Sister Linda uh, on her cell phone. Uh, Pastor told me to read this, so I'm giving out your number. 301-520-7332. Uh, also, you can respond to Sister Robin Henry or Sister Deborah Mosley if you plan on attending the Pastor Appreciation Lunch the next day on and we'd like for you to RSVP by the 18th as well. Sister Robin can be reached at 240-447-1461 and Sister Deborah can be reached at 301-674-0940.
I'll just put this out there. You can also respond to the, the church email from NBC secretary, that's uh, Sister Freda. Uh, just let us know one way or the other if you're going to be here so we can plan accordingly. We're hoping to have a blessed time in the Lord, even if we are continuing to be physically distanced. Uh, by way of additional announcement, we do want to take this time to just recognize and acknowledge that October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We want to continue to pray for all of our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our grandmothers, our aunts, our cousins, and our friends who have been affected by this condition and this disease. We want to pray that the Lord would continue to be with those who are struggling with it, to support those family members who are dealing with it, and we want to pray for those women in our lives who aren't dealing with it, that they never have to deal with it. But we just want to acknowledge that we are praying for you and we love you and we care about you and we recognize you. And I see Sister Linda looking fantastic in her pink today off camera, but she looks fantastic. Just trust me. <laughs> it is indeed good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to hear from the Lord and it's good to be encouraged by his word. I just want to share with you very briefly that we need to remember, even as we are continuing to grow in our Christian faith, even as we are continuing to have our iron sharpen iron, even as we continue to seek the Lord, recognizing that we are imperfect, but we serve a perfect God, we need to recognize that how we approach people matters. We need to recognize that to share the love of Christ, you need to do it in a loving way. I was reminded yesterday, one of, one of my favorite movies uh, that I, I just can't turn away from when I'm flipping channels when I see it on yesterday was the movie Ray. It's a fantastic movie, uh, but as I was doing some work yesterday, I had it on, and there's a line that I always remember in that movie, uh, and it's shortly after he has a band member leave, and he's trying to get his manager to go find a new member of the band. And what he says to his manager is, I need you to find me somebody with all of the church training, but none of the church attitude. <laughs> and if you think about that, what he was saying was, I want somebody who is instilled with all, he was talking about it in a musical sense, but in a spiritual sense, we all know what that means. We, we have a tendency sometimes, if we're not careful, to run people off with our Bible thumping. We have a tendency, if we're not careful, to allow the message to get lost in how it is delivered. And so we got to be careful as we are, especially in this time of, frankly, unparalleled turmoil in this country, at least during my lifetime with this pandemic, that we are sharing love, the love of Christ, in a loving way. Because you can have a message of love, but share it in a way that is not very loving. And then the message isn't received the way it should be received. So I want to encourage everyone this morning that what we are supposed to do, even though it's hard, is to repay evil with what? With kindness, with love. Because as the Bible says, if... If we only love the people that love us, even sinners do that, even unsaved folk do that. We've got to go that extra step, go that extra mile and work hard because we want to give God the glory and we want to share his love with people. Amen? Amen. 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 This morning, uh, Pastor is, is starting a new series uh, and uh, the word is going to come uh, from the, the very beginning, the book of Genesis uh, so we're going to turn all the way back to the very first book of the Bible. So if you would grab your swords and your apps and turn there with me, specifically to the book of Genesis chapter 5, and we're going to lift up verses 21 through 24. Uh, if you are here in the room with me, uh, if you would join me in standing uh, when you have that as we prepare to read God's word. If you are online, uh, please uh Position yourself in an attitude of reverence as we prepare to read God's word. I'll be reading from the New King James, Genesis 5, 21 through 24, where the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord reads as follows. 
Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all of the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word. Let all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to read uh, the words from Pastor's Heart in a moment, and then you'll hear from our pastor. Before I do that, let me just remind everyone uh, that here at the church, as has become our custom uh, during the pandemic, after we sign off from the internet, we will sing some songs of praise and worship here. And so I would ask that you, uh, in your home or your dorm or wherever you may be, take a moment and just sing a song of praise. Reflect on a hymn. Think about how good God has been to you after we sign off. Don't just limit this to the 30 or 40 minutes where we hear a sermon now every morning and then go on with your life. Keep it going a little while longer and keep a song in your heart and keep a praise on your lips for we serve an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Amen. The words from the pastor's heart this morning read as follows. All of us have been tested in the world today. We have been questioned, and without a doubt, so has our faith. Our, our testimony will be challenged as well. Yes, it is hard today at times to maintain a strong Christian testimony in the midst of chaos. Our Lord doesn't tell us that when times get tough, we can just do and say whatever we want. In spite of it all, we still have to be a witness of God's goodness and his grace to those we come into contact with daily. Enoch's testimony was one that pleased God in spite of what was going on around him. All of us indeed have a testimony. The question is, is it pleasing to God? Let's bless the Lord and encourage one another as our pastor comes with the word this morning. Good morning, everyone, and praise the Lord. That's right. Give the Lord a hand clap. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's always great to be in the house of the Lord. It's always great to have an opportunity to share the awesome word of God. Uh, truly, in spite of it all, we could all still testify of the goodness and of the mercies of the living God. Uh, the truth of the matter is, if he wasn't alive and if he wasn't still keeping us, we'd have pulled whatever hair we got left out a long time ago and lost our, as the old folks used to say, cotton picking mine, and it wouldn't have came back. And we wouldn't have wanted it back. But it's only because of God's grace and only because of his mercy. We cannot forget that. Day by day, his mercy is renewed upon his people, and we've got to give him praise from the sanctuary of our hearts for that. Amen? Amen. Today we're going to look at how to have a testimony. As was read to you in the words from the pastor's heart, we have a testimony. It really depends upon what kind we're going to have. But we want to have a testimony, as Enoch did, that's pleasing to God. Amen? We want to continue to do the things uh, in spite of the opposition that we face today that make our Lord happy. Because if we make him happy, he will certainly bless his children. Just as an encourager, uh, to, uh, as the deacon alluded to, we do have a couple of events coming up. Uh, one of the reasons we need you to RSVP if you want a chili and grilled cheese is obvious, so we know how much to make. Uh, let me say that if you're in your vehicles coming up for the drive-up concert, we could bring it out to you if you don't want to come in. We'll serve it to you. But we just need to uh, uh, know how many. And yes, of course, we will be following all safety and like our health our protocols as we do this. And um, the same for the uh, luncheon, the follow-on, the following Sunday. We will have that. We got enough space to have, have people apart, but we just need to know if you want to be a part of that time as well. But we encourage you to keep moving on. Uh, even though we got to be wise and we can only go so far so fast, I believe that we got to keep 
doing the work of the Lord as God enables us to do it. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we give you praise from the sanctuary of our hearts this morning, and we ask that you would be with us as we open up the word. Might we hear what you have to say to us? You have something for everyone who is here in the building and those online. You have something special for them today. They're going to hear the word only as they could hear it, only as you give it to them to hear it. So I pray that you might encourage everyone under the sound of my voice. And when we leave being online and we leave this building, might we say we were blessed today, we were encouraged, we heard the word of the Lord. Father, bless your people. You, you know all of our needs. We have special needs right now. We have needs that we haven't even shared with everybody else, Father, but you know them. And we ask that you meet all of our needs according to your power and glory through Christ Jesus. That you will give healing to those that need healing. That you will save those who need to be saved. That you might encourage those who need to be encouraged. Those who simply just need to be blessed. In any way, might you give them that blessing today. Those who just need a little bit more peace of mind, might you grant them the peace that goes beyond all our understanding that only you could give. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come together in spirit and in truth and in body. May your name always be praised and are glorified. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray, the name that is still above your name, the name that one day every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. In that name we pray, Jesus. Amen. amen. How to have a testimony. What's your testimony? How to have a testimony. Genesis 5, as was read to you, Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. Say walked with God. Walk with God. And he begot Methuselah. After he uh, begot Methuselah 300 years and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God. There it is again. Say walked with God. And he was not, for God took him, for God took him. God translated him from walking on this side of heaven to being in his presence. He was not, because God took him. One of the ways that we could have a testimony is we got to learn to walk with God. God is willing to walk with us, but we got to be willing to walk with him. That's why the text says it twice, Enoch walked with God. Now, there are certain things you got to do if you're going to walk with God. It, it, it's, it's one thing to say you're a Christian. It's another thing to be a Christian. Amen. It's one thing to say that, that, that uh, Christ lives in you. It's another thing for you to live in Christ. Amen. You've got to walk with God. How do you walk with God? You walk with God by letting him talk to you daily and by you talking to him, by reading his word, by praying by encouraging yourselves, as Paul said, through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, by even making melody in your heart, even in the crazy mixed up world that just gets crazier by the moment, there should still be a melody in your heart unto the Lord. You walk with God even when the terrain is rough, even when you could slip and fall at any minute, even when the, the moss is all over the stone, you still have to do your best to walk with God. Now you say, well, why is it so important for me to walk with God, Pastor Ice? Well, I'm glad you asked. Jeremiah chapter 10, turn there. It's really simple why we need to walk with God. Jeremiah 10 and verse 23. Jeremiah 10, 23. Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Je Jeremiah 10, 23. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. You need to walk with God because you don't know how to walk without God. That's really what it boils down to. You, you need to walk with the Lord because you... you you, you don't know how to walk without him. I was on the road a while ago, and I wasn't paying close enough attention 
and I ended up on the wrong road. And I don't like being on the wrong road. Nobody that I know who drives around, you want to be on the wrong road. You want to be on the right road, amen? amen. So I, I, I had a couple choices. Either put it back on the phone and see if it stares back to the right direction or turn around and try to double back and get on the right road. Or the third option, which was, which was the best option, was, Lord, get us through this. I don't like being in neighborhoods I'm not familiar with and in, in, in towns that don't have a comfortable feeling. So I'm going to walk with you and allow you, want you to walk with us as we navigate through this. Because guess what? No matter how many times I might travel a road, I still get confused. No matter how far you come in life, life, you cannot walk far. You can't walk anywhere unless God's directing your steps. Remember that old song, Friends of Distinction, you got me going in circles? <laughs> okay. That's the way our life is sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We just, and it ain't round and around over you, like the song says, okay? <laughs> it's round and around because we're confused, okay? It's not for a man to direct his steps. We can't do it without the Lord's direction and without the Lord's help. We need his help. Jesus told the disciples as he was calling them to follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. But you got to walk with him. They had to walk with him. And even though they had questions along the way, as they walked with him, he told them what to do. And they became fishers of men. Remember the story about Simon Peter, one of the stories when he was out on his boat fishing all night, and of course that was, that was his occupation. Peter knew something about fishing. And he was working all night. And it didn't work. And I'm sure Peter knew the fishing spots and where the bass were and, 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 and where he could get the pike and everything else, where he could get the rainbow trout. He knew where the spots were, but it, it didn't work. And then the Lord came along and said, go out a little deeper. Cast on that side of the boat, but go out a little deeper. And Simon got a little grumpy from being up all night. And, you know, Jesus was the Messiah, but he wasn't no fisherman. So, okay, Lord, so because you say so, but I've been working at this. And I can imagine he said what we do under our breath. And, I mean, you might be topping your field, but I'm the fisherman. I mean, but hey, you, you, you say you're the Savior, so that's fine. But, I mean, you, not, now you're in my territory. But because you say so. And, of course, the rest of the story we know. He did what the Lord said, and he had such a bounty that he had to call in John and his other buddies. Y'all got to come get some of this fish, or we're going to be at the bottom of the lake. This is why you walk with Jesus. There are blessings from walking with Jesus. You will have abundance from walking with Jesus. He will tell you what to do and how to do it, no matter how long you've been doing something a certain way. If you learn to walk with the Savior, it will please him, and he will bless you. John 15, the Gospel of John. See, it, it, it comes down to this. We, we like to remind people how good we are at the things that we do sometimes. We all have an occupation, a ministry, or some type of trade, some type of our profession that we are in. And truth be told, for what we do, we know a little something, don't we? We know a little something, but we don't know all of something, okay? But we know a little something. This is what it boils down to. The Gospel of John, if you found to say God is good. John chapter 15. And look at verse 5. Jesus is speaking here. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same, say the same, Amen. brings forth much fruit. And he didn't stop right there. He goes on to say, for without me you could do nothing. Why do you walk with Jesus? Why should you want to be walking with God every day? Because without him you can't do anything. But if you walk with him, you'll be like Simon, bearing a whole lot of fruit. 
your family will be blessed. You will be blessed. And again, we know how it works. The more you and I are blessed, then we need to bless others even more. And then the blessings continue. But we got to walk with God to get those blessings. And he didn't say, I'm going to give you a pass in 2020 not to walk with me. I know how you're feeling. And just so you know that I know, none of this caught me by surprise. Okay, because I am God. Let's go back to Job now. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? I knew 2020 was coming. I knew it was going to unravel. But I'm still God. And you still need to walk with me. Because now more than ever, without me, you're going to be confused doing nothing. How to have a testimony? First thing you got to do is begin walking with God and stand close to him. Folks, we need to be close to God now. We need to be close to our families. We understand that. A lot of families have, if you will, gathered together. Some by choice, not by choice, just by circumstance. And you're back together, either under one roof or in one area. And yes, we look out for each other. Because we're family. Amen? Amen. When I was working out last night, I was at the gym and I saw somebody from the church that I recognized. And, and we spoke and everything. And they did their thing and I did mine. And, and of course, I'm thinking, it, and it's late and the gym is real equipped with cameras and all that. But I just kind of stayed in my car for a couple seconds. Just wanted to make sure that no clowns walked up in there. Not that they would, but just had to make sure, okay, they, they, they cool, they all right. Now, why did I do that? Because I just think the young lady's a nice lady. Well, yeah, she's a nice young lady, but she's family. Okay? So just in case, and I know God has his own control, but just in case you walk in there with your bulging biceps thinking you're going to run up on somebody and impress somebody, there's a godly old man outside the door, <laughs> okay, who felt pretty good because he just got done working out. Like we say in, in the business that I'm in, we don't go long, but we go hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But that's family. That's family. See, we're the family of God, and for his protection in these difficult times, we got to walk with him. Amen. And realize it's crazy, and every time we think it can't get any crazier, <laughs> it does. <laughs> There's a method to the madness. It's just one, one, one thing, one thing, one thing after the other, one thing after the other, and the madness continues. But we got to keep walking with God. Because it's not for us to direct our own steps. Because we can't. You got to please God. Hebrews chapter 11. If you're going to walk with God, I think it's good that you please God. You know, it would be like walking with your parents and fussing with them throughout the whole walk. What, what's the future in that? I don't want to walk this way. You please God. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 5, talking about, I mean, look again. By faith, Enoch was translated, transported, translated that he should not see death and was not found, couldn't find him. Why? Because God translated him for before his translation, before God took him, he had this testimony. He had a testimony. Again, I'm going to let you know, you will have a testimony. What was his testimony? That he pleased God. And for whatever God's reasons were, he did it for Enoch and Enoch alone. He says, you know what? I want you up here with me. He pleased God. And we're going to see later on how he pleased God. But he pleased God. Ask yourself, are you pleasing God? Are you pleasing God? 
Well, these are difficult times, Pastor, and everything is different. I get it. I feel it. I know it. I'm experiencing it just like you are. But we still have to have a heart and a mind and a desire to please the one who created us. I feel the same pains you feel. I feel the same hurt and anger you feel. But we still got to please God. Romans chapter 12. Because if we don't please God, I guess the fair question to ask is, who are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing? Romans chapter 12. Let's go to verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that she present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. Somebody say reasonable service and be not conformed to this world be not conformed to this world this crazy world don't be conformed to this world Paul's world was crazy in his day but we know it's crazy 10x right now be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing somebody said renewing of your mind that she may prove that you might demonstrate that you might show what is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you want to please God, then you got to start living a certain way. And you can't be conformed to this world, but you got to be transformed. You got to have your mind renewed. Listen, we need to stay abreast of what's going on in the world. We understand that, but don't let it destroy your mind. Don't let it destroy your mind. Sometimes it's hard. I know it because I'm the same way. It's hard to turn it off because it's just one thing. And, you, it, it, and it's, but sometimes you got to get your mind, don't you? <laughs> sometimes your mind will be challenged. Sometimes if you're not careful, it happens to everybody, well, you do what we call zoning out. You, you're, just, you're there, but you're not there. We got to make sure that we're continually renewing our mind. One way we do it is obviously through the Word of God, yeah. obviously having our minds transformed so that we could prove what God's purpose is for our life yeah. and be in His perfect will. It's reasonable that we give ourselves to Him. Yeah. It's a reasonable after what He's did for us, done for us, yeah. after what He's doing for us. It's the most reasonable thing. That I love the word in that part. It's just reasonable. It's not even. It's not even all that. It's just reasonable. That you do that much. That's what's pleasing to God. Yeah. It's a reasonable service. You got to say, Lord, cleanse my mind. You need to be doing that every single day when you get up. You need to be doing it when you go to sleep. Lord, there's been a lot that has gone through my head today. I need to sleep well. Please cleanse my mind, Lord. Please give me that peace that goes beyond all understanding. Please help my mind to settle down and think about the things of the Lord. I've had to think about so many. Think about what you got to think about now throughout the day. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's not just the, 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 the pandemic or, or the social unrest or the, or the politics. You got your family issues have magnified. Okay, seriously. It, it, it's, it's not just that's just Johnny being Johnny or that's just Karen being Karen. It then went up another level. And even as adults, it then went up another level. And sometimes you got to just, Lord, just renew my mind. Because if you don't renew my mind, I'm liable to go out here. I'm liable to hurt somebody in this house or hurt somebody out there in the street. That would be the truth. So, Lord, renew my mind so that I could please you. Okay, because this pleases God when we prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That pleases him. Go to our Colossians chapter 1. And look at verse 10. Colossians 1.10. 
that she might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Unto what? All pleasing. Unto all pleasing. That she might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful. He wants us to be fruitful. And notice what Paul continues to say, in every good work. He wants us to be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So as we are learning what's happening in our world today, we also have to be increasing in the knowledge of God. We also got to strive to walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing. We got to still try to please him every day. We got to try to grow in grace every day. And we got to continue to try to be fruitful in every good work. When we have a chance to do good, we still have to strive to do good. That will give us a greater testimony. That could become our testimony. See, when you're doing good works, you don't have to wait for mankind to recognize you. Others will know. Yeah, we shouldn't withhold honor, the Bible says, from those that it is due. But on the other hand, we don't do the work that we do, wait for mankind to say, well done. We do what we do, waiting to hear God say, well done, by our good and faithful servant. We've all done what we've been doing in our careers and lives for a long time. And people have told me over the last few years, man, you should have did this, or you should have got that, or you should apply for that. Everybody know what the real insight is. Thank you. Appreciate you're thinking highly of me, but you know what? It's just about pleasing God. It's just about pleasing God. See, because if you don't please God, how are you going to have a testimony? Because if you're not pleasing God, then God's not happy with you, and if God ain't happy with you, then what's your testimony? You're just like everybody else, just forging your way through, hoping to find a diamond in the rough one day. That's not pleasing to God. Live a life worthy of his calling. He has called you. If you want to walk with God, then it only stands to reason that you're going to preach God. If you're going to have a testimony, don't be afraid of the gospel. Amen. Enoch preached God. In this world that we live in today with all the ups and downs, we got to preach God. we got to preach what thus saith the Lord. Go to Jude, because we don't see a lot about Enoch, but we see enough to let us know the type of life you lived. Take my word for it. When God translates you from here to his presence, that's a bonus. That means you did something right. Look at the book of Jude, verse 14 and 15. Let's look at what Enoch did. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, he preached of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Enoch preached that the Lord was coming back, even in his day. Yeah. Folks, if, if you want to have a testimony, preach what thus saith the Lord. I'm here to remind you and to encourage you that the Lord is coming back one day. Yeah. As we spoke over the last couple of weeks, you can believe it and receive it because it's true. A change is coming. Yes. The Lord will be coming with his saints one day. Yes. And every knee shall, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. Yes. You got to preach that. Verse 15, to execute. Oh, yeah, he's coming to, to set it right, to execute judgment upon all. Upon all, you're not going to escape. You can sit there all you want to move. You don't believe in a God. You're not going to escape. Amen. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners, you see that word ungodly in there at least four times, have spoken against him. You got to preach the word. You have the right to say whatever you want to say, but know this, for all these things, the Bible makes it clear, God's going to hold you in judgment. Yeah. Say whatever you want to say. I ain't going to fuss with you. <laughs> okay? Talk whatever you want to talk, but God's going to hold you in judgment. Yeah. Enoch prophesied. And Enoch wasn't 
doesn't look like he was one of those preachers who just going to preach about love and kindness and purple flowers and red roses. And if you feel good, you are good, so that's all it takes. No. He preached God's coming back with his saints, and he's coming to judge the world. Okay? All that ungodliness that you've been carrying on, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. There's a reckoning coming! And God's going to be the reckoner. We got to preach the word. Romans 1 and 16 tells us this. For I am not ashamed that the gospel of Christ was the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I am not ashamed of the power of, of the gospel. Folks, we cannot be ashamed of the power of the gospel, the power of God. We've got to preach, even in these difficult days and times, what does save the Lord. We've got to preach it. We've got to teach it. We've got to live it. We've got to believe it ourselves. We've got to walk in it every single day. So if you want to have a testimony that's pleasing to the Father, you got to walk with God, you got to please God, and you got to preach God. Because he's coming back one day. And as I said, there will be a reckoning. There will be a reckoning. But that's not for you and I to worry about. What we got to do is have a testimony that's pleasing in his sight. Have a testimony that will encourage others in this dark world that we're living in to follow Christ. Have a testimony that when he tells us, as he told Simon, I know you know your job. I know you've been doing it, but I'm, I'm here now. And I need you to go out a little further and go on the other side of the boat and watch what happens. Our testimony should be to believe God. And understand that it's not for us just to wake up and have our own plans, but have the steps that God wants for us. The Bible makes it clear, it says this, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If you really want to have a testimony pleasing to God, I guess the fair question to ask is who's ordering your steps? Difficult as it is today, don't let mankind begin to order your steps. Your steps should be ordered by the Lord. They should be ordered by the Lord. As we bring this to a close in just a few minutes, you need to understand something. The fervor we see in our world today, the unrest, just the nonsense that we see every day, doesn't relieve us of our duty to have a testimony that's pleasing in this sight. Is it hard? You better believe it's hard. Is it easy to sit back and Watch what's going on without getting emotional. You better believe it's hard. Things that you thought could never work you up are working you up now. But have a testimony. Because at the end of the day, God will be coming back. He will be the final authority. And one day we will all stand before him. And I want my testimony, I want your testimony, I want our testimony to be that we walk with God and maintain the testimony even through the most difficult of days. That we maintain a testimony. Because at the end of it all, what did you have but your testimony? What did you have but your testimony? All your fortune, all your fame, we all know that money and possessions come and go. 
Talk to those who keep experiencing hurricane after hurricane and keep rebuilding after rebuilding. Possessions come and go. Families, friends come and go. But your testimony will live long after you're gone. Maybe I could ask it this way. What will people say about you after you're gone? Will there be murmurings? Or will there be, I only hope to have the testimony that she or he had or that they had. Because they stood up and stood out. Even in the midst of the chaos. Stand to your feet with me. Just for a moment. I know you're struggling. We all are. I know it's difficult. But I want to challenge you. This morning we talked about how to have a testimony walking with God. Next week we'll talk about talking with God. But right now. Right now. When you leave this place and when you leave your home. Or if you're working from home and you leave your room that you're in. When you go to the mailbox, to the grocery store, to pick up something from the dry cleaners, drop something off, when you open the door to get the delivery, whatever it is you do, you're going to encounter somebody, and your testimony is going to be what they remember. Your smile or lack thereof, your praise music or grumpy music will be what they remember. What's your testimony today? What will your testimony be tomorrow? Because it's only because of God's grace and mercy that we're able to get up on our feet right now. It's only because of his grace and mercy that we are standing. But in spite of it all, we cannot be ashamed of the power of God and the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we want to be well, we've got to walk well, we've got to please well, and we've got to preach well, and let God do the rest. Let me pray for you before I call the deacon back up. Father, for those under the sound of my voice, I just ask that they will be honest and open before you right now, because you know our hearts anyway. Help them, Father, to just walk with you this morning. Help them to have a testimony this morning that's pleasing in your sight in spite of the stuff we go through every day. Father, someone under the sound of my voice needs this word this morning. If you're out there in Facebook land or social media land or even here in the sanctuary, just, just extend your hand right now to the Lord and say, Lord, it's been a struggle. Lord, it's hard. But I'm asking you, Lord, to help me to be who I am. And who I am is a child of the King. Help me, Lord, to maintain my testimony. Because somebody else needs to be added to the family of God. Somebody that I encounter needs you, Jesus. Help them to see Jesus in me because of my testimony. Bless, Lord. Keep us until we meet again. By your gentle spirit, by your outstretched hand, by your love. Hold us close so that we can feel your presence. And when it's all said and done, Lord, help us to realize all is well. All is well. Because you are still God. Bless, Father, in Jesus the Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. His grace and mercy. Amen. You are living this moment. Because of him. You are living this, even right now, you are living this moment because of him. We want to thank him. We want to praise him too because his grace and mercy brought us through. Bless him one more time.
Amen. Amen. It is, it is always good to hear an encouraging word. It is always good to remember that we ought to keep our steps ordered in the Lord. It is always good to be reminded that it is his grace and mercy that is keeping us, that is guiding us. It is always good to remember that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We ought to praise him. We ought to thank him. We ought to magnify and glorify him. And even when times get tough, understand that God has not ever left us. He will never leave us and he won't ever forsake us. Keep him in your minds, your hearts, and keep your mind stayed on him and everything in the end will be okay. As we prepare to close, I just want to remind everyone that we'll have some time of praise and worship here uh, at the church. Uh, please do the same in your homes and, and wherever you are. Uh, please remember to um, email or call or text uh, anyone that I talked about earlier just to RSVP uh, for the upcoming events. And last and certainly not least, uh, I know that the Lord is leading you uh, and guiding you, but just remember uh, that even in the midst of this particular time, the work and the business of the church goes on. The needs of God's people are, are now present in many ways more than ever. So don't forget that we have an obligation to pay our tithes. It does not get relieved just because we aren't physically present here in the church. We do have an app that you can use or you can send things here to the church Please be blessed and be encouraged and know that we have an opportunity to bless others with our time, our talent, and our tenth as the Lord has called us to do. So please keep that in mind. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time and for this day. We thank you for the spiritual nourishment that you have given us, Father God. We ask that our spiritual bodies would digest it and that it would nourish us, Father God, every single day. We ask, Father God, that for every single one within the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would bless them even right where they are. You, more than anybody else, more than ourselves, know what we need, Father God. We pray that you give it to us right now, that you charge the angels to encamp around us and protect us, that you allow us to be a blessing to those that we need to be a blessing to, and that you would have someone come across our path this week, Father God, that we can speak the name of Jesus and speak life to them. Now, until we come together again at the next appointed time in this place, Father God, bless, keep, protect, and guide as only you can in jesus precious name we pray let all god's people say amen, amen. goodbye and god bless